Hello and welcome. We're going to be talking about exchange transfusion. So this is the process of uh, withdrawing a patient's blood and replacing it with fresh whole blood. It could be double volume exchange transfusion where we replace the patient's total body volume twice, leaving intravascular volume the same, or a partial exchange where uh, there is um, increasing or decreasing the patient's hematocrit without changing the intravascular so the indications of um, a double volume exchange transfusion include hyperbilirubinemia, hyperammonemia, or to remove bacterial toxins, as well as to correct electrolytes and fluid balance. And partial volume is done if there is severe anemia with fluid overload or with polycythemia. Hyperbilirubinemia, um, the indications we do exchange transfusion if the total serum bilirubin is greater than 428 micromoles per liter in a neonate and increase bilirubin production um, from isoimmune hemolysis. It's also an indication is uh, this helps to remove circulating and sensitize red blood cells. So if there's ABO or resistance incompatibility, uh, exchange transfusion is a preferred uh, treatment modality. If intensive follow therapy fails to keep TSB below 428, uh, exchange transfusion becomes necessary. Then moderate or advanced clinical signs of bilirubin induced uh, neurologic dysfunction are also um, an indication. After double volume exchange transfusion, the TSB falls to approximately half to three quarters of the pre exchange value. And if you do a triple exchange, this can reduce TSB by 95%. Then TSB uh, will subsequently increase to about two-thirds of the pre-exchange value because of uh, recalibration between extravascular and intravascular bilirubin. So during exchange transmission, we are just correcting the intravascular uh, hyperbilirubinemia, but there is bilirubin extravascular, and after the exchange transmission, this will move into the blood vessels. Okay, the materials that we need for double exchange transmission, we need a head for the baby, uh, a mask for the uh, person that's performing the procedures, the sterile gloves, umbilical artery catheter, or it could be in medical vein, then heparinized flush uh, solution, uh, a sterile gown, a blood warmer, the filter and tubing. Then we need fresh whole blood. Um, in Zimbabwe, we use less than five days old or fresh frozen plasma with thick uh, red blood cells. Then you calcium carbonate, uh, 10 or 20 mil uh, syringes. Then uh, for partial volume exchanges, you don't need you need, you of course, you would need uh, the blood. Um, you would need the blood warmer as well. You'd also need all these other things. Um, okay. So the procedure um, for double exchange, I'm going to talk about double exchange, which occurs in hyperbilirubinemia. You obtain the consent from the mother or from the caregiver. And then if it's a uh, patient, you need to place the patient in ICU. Um, then you can infuse albumin one to two hours before procedure. This helps to shift the extravascular bilirubin into the circulation. Okay, then you clean and drip in sterile clothing, and um, that's, uh, then you monitor during the procedure. You monitor the glucometers every 15 minutes. You also monitor the respiratory rate um, every five minutes, the heart rate every five minutes, and the temperature also should also be monitored every five minutes. Post procedure, uh, phototherapy should be reinitiated. Remember, there will be recalibration of extravascular bilirubin and intravascular. You also do full blood count, urea, and electrolytes in the camp. So, camp, you want to check for the calcium levels. In the use and this, you are worried about potassium. The full blood count, you want to check the hemoglobin. Okay, so they can be uh, the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. So, you can have uh, polycythemia after this, or you could have anemia. Then, you measure the TSB two hours after the procedure. The complications, of course, it could be blood-borne infections, uh, thrombocytopenia and coagulopathy, uh, graft versus worst disease, necrotizing enterocolitis, portal vein thrombosis. Then as you infuse, depending on the technique used, you can actually cause A emboli or ascending cholangitis, which is the infections uh, on, on the catheter area. Then electrolyte abnormalities, there is hyperkalemia, okay? Because blood, if it's old or if it's dead, it begins to hemolyze and it causes hyperkalemia. Then hypocalcemia is caused by 
the citrate that's in blood, uh, which is the preservative, and this will bind to calcium and cause low calcium levels. Then you can also get uh, cardiac arrhythmias, uh, also from these lateral derangements.